We already made a Weather Channel joke. Yeah. Also, we took a bit of a break between episodes, so we're going to be slightly more confused than last episode. Slightly. Anyways, <laughs> welcome back to Let's Play Trauma Team. I'm Red X Parasite. I'm Air327. And we are now Miki Mishima. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it did, it did say to go to her room, right? Yes. Yeah, we, we're supposed okay. to come back here. Yeah, yeah, that's right, because we just got the fingerprints. Okay. <laughs> we we got the fingerprints. No, we got, <laughs> we got the aluminum well, you powder. Know, you know what I mean. I know what you mean. Uh, so this is, this is the powder. It's, it smells like a dog sniffing something, or that's what it sounds it, it like. It smells like a it dog sniffing like, something. <laughs> Clearly. This video game clearly smells like a dog <laughs> sniffing something. Hey, it has 4D. It's new tech, okay? Mm. Oops. Let's try the doorknob. Mm. No. Lamp. Hmm. Why did they give us this? <laughs> oh. What? Oh. Hi. Hmm. So these are all the same fingerprints. It's likely they belong to the victim. Those don't really look like fingerprints. No. They well, look yeah. more like somebody was scraping at the floor. floor. Yeah. Doing handstands. Where? Pushing <laughs> off the walls in zero G. Or wearing hand-shaped shoes. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yes. She was probably crawling on the floor to move around. The prints indicate she was heading towards... The door? The prints on the floor lead <laughs> to the room's entrance. They're even under the mat. What's underneath the mat? Nothing. Well, then let's spray with stuff. Oops. Wrong thing. Just as I thought. Blood. These are blood stains. Hmm. They must be Veronica's. Considering the fact so far, these blood stains must have been caused by. Yeah. Yes. Veronica's clothing was covered in blood that she had vomited. The amount of blood here is more than would be a fatal loss in most people. But there's something odd about these blood stains. They ended the door. Blood is a liquid. Mm -hmm. It should be evenly spread across the floor. If there was one reason for the blood stains to be shaped like this, it would have to be... The door was closed? Mm. <laughs> the floor was replaced. I mean, they <laughs> would have had time to do that, theoretically, yeah. but... Let's go with the more likely. <laughs> yes. This door was closed when Veronica was vomiting blood. That's why the blood spread unevenly. All right. So there's that. What else is there to find, though? That is the question. Hmm. Now, may maybe let's try spring. Or not, can we not? This door had been closed. Okay, yeah, so let's say, can we move the door? Thus. Let's try closing the door. The Ooh. room is now in the same condition as it was when that happened. The lower part of the door has numerous scratches on it. What could these scratches be? Huh? Blood stains? Inside the scratch marks? From looking at the shape and location of these scratches, they are... They were made it... Oh, yeah, they're scratching. Mm -hmm. The scratch marks were caused by... <laughs> well, the marks scratch. left on the inside door were caused by... Yeah, but by... she's called them scratch marks. <laughs> yes, these are traces that someone had clawed at the door. That's probably where the blood came from. On top of that, it was done with such desperation that their own nails cracked and bled. Hmm. I think it's very likely that she died right there. Yeah. All right, she said we can go back now, right? I think so. Okay. All right, we should get these all analyzed. No. Well, maybe. These blood stains are at the entrance to the room. 
The door was closed when Veronica vomited blood. That, along with the scratches on the inside of the door, there's just one sad conclusion we can reach from all this. She was trapped inside. Mm-hmm. Yes, Veronica was prevented from leaving here. Writhing in pain and unable to open the door, she lost a lethal amount of blood and died right here. She wasn't kidnapped and killed. All right. We can deduce the victim's condition within this room by putting these facts together. Veronica was crawling on the floor. It's likely that this is because of the mysterious disease she was suffering from. It sapped her strength to the point that she was unable to even stand. She had an attack of her disease inside this room. All right, not a lot of stuff left. Yeah. These there we two go. do share a common link. The victim's hospital records say she'd been at the hospital since. Uh oh, it's the numeric keypad again. <laughs> I love how many yes, uh, two places ago. they give you. Oh yeah, how many decimal places? Well, yeah, it's gonna become important later when you use it for longer things, mm -hmm. specifically uh, phone numbers. I was gonna say for I bet phone numbers. Her death, she'd been treated at the hospital. Now, the parents' hospital records say they've been visiting the hospital since... Also two months ago. Yes, they also started visiting the hospital two months ago. Veronica was going for migraines, hallucinations, mood swings, and vomiting blood. And her parents were going after suffering frequent injuries. A month before the victim was found dead, the parents suddenly stopped having these injuries. An unpleasant coincidence, to be sure. I hope there's no connection here. I think there is, though. Yeah. Hmm. Yes, these seem to be related. According to the charts, the victim's symptoms were migraines, hallucinations, mood swings, vomiting blood, hemoptysis, and perhaps most importantly... It was sick. Yeah, that. Yes. Sudden aggressive behavior. That is, she was acting out violently. Would we'll explain her parents' injuries, especially if she changed suddenly. Mm -hmm. Her conditions must have worsened severely a month before her death. That is, her violent tendencies would have increased in frequency and severity. In addition to that is the fracture in Veronica's finger. This is the only injury she had while alive. That's a common injury when people hit things with their fists. On the other hand, the parents' injuries seemed like signs of abuse. If I were to consider all these points, those wounds were... Mm -hmm. Right. The hospital records of both the victim and her parents, they show that Veronica had been physically abusing her parents. The case has been solved. Yay. The dead shall speak. Let's put together the truth of what happened here. A woman's skeleton was found 50 kilometers downriver of the city. The victim's name is Veronica Cage. She was 23 years old. She was suffering from some sort of illness. It caused her severe pain, along with mental instability. When she couldn't go on, she snapped and turned violent. This card shows the truth of that emotional state. I forgot about this part. Mm-hmm. The patient had frequently physically assaulted her parents. This same disease finally caused her own death as well. 
This card shows evidence of that final attack. Uh, probably. Yeah. I was gonna, it was gonna yes. be either that or seal. There were the door. traces of blood at her room's entrance. Not quite yet. Yeah. <laughs> During the attack, she writhed in agony about the room. The shattered mirror is evidence of that violent behavior. Eventually, her strength gave out and she collapsed. She used the last of her strength to try to leave the room. However, her one final wish was left unanswered. This card speaks to that sad truth. In her fading consciousness, she tore at the door. But she died there, and the culprits carried her body out. The proof of this is on this card. Exactly. The earring caught on something while she was being carried. She was already dead when the earring was torn from her ear. Most likely, her death surprised the ones responsible. They then cleaned the room to hide any signs she was there. But whoever cleaned the room had poor eyesight. And thus did not see the Didn't they even say that the, the mother shot. did? Yeah, yes. the mother had poor eyesight because of... The body had yeah. to be hidden as well. Their plan was to throw the body off a bridge, eight kilometers away. But they were scared off by a pair of oncoming headlights. This culprit, with a bad back, gave up and fled the scene. Those headlights belonged to the blue truck. The driver could not avoid the body and ran over her. The driver like believed how the he blue had truck her is completely solid blue. <laughs> Ironically, what he did only completed the culprit's plan. This card has proof that she was already dead when run over. Hiding a corpse is a crime, but the driver wasn't the murderer. The ones responsible are those who locked her away to die. She sought help, not knowing that none would ever come. Her last words are the proof of that desperation. That is the better audio quality version of that clip. <laughs> this is the whole truth in how her life was cut short. I don't know what the dead want, but the truth must come out. I'm going to see the ones who cut your life's thread short. They've definitely got some explaining to do. Mm -hmm. Also, I like how in a game about doctors, it's just like some disease. The medical examiner, what brings you here? Your daughter died in suffering. <sighs> she struggled, she shouted, and she clawed at her door. She tried to escape so terribly that her own nails tore off. Why didn't you open the door? There was no choice. <laughs> we wanted her to be happy. <laughs> we wanted her to be normal. We never thought this would... Her death may have been inescapable. But... You defiled her death in order to protect yourselves. That can never be forgiven. This 
is a really kind of depressing thing. Well, I mean, when death came to you, death usually is. Did you suffer? <sighs> yeah, but like, Soon I will in a way, myself. in a different way than normal. If that makes any sense. Yeah, Miss Kimishima, but... your test results have come back. This is about her I disease. See. Mm. Let me ask you up front. How long do I have until my flame goes out? <sighs> a year at best. Maybe six months. Also, hi, Dr. Styles. <laughs> I understand. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, Dr. Kimishima, the helicopter's here to take you to the lab. All right. Thank you. In case you can't read that, it says Rosalia. Hmm. Rosalia. Oh, okay. I what can read this? this. Someone's name? Dr. Kimishima, are you all right up there? Uh, yes, I'm fine. I'll be right down. Well, that's weird. Yeah. Okay, then. I am confused. And with that, that is the end of the second forensics mission. So next time on Let's Play Trauma Team, we'll be taking on our first surgery. Okay. With the weird guy in the weird mask in the weird jail. Don't worry, he doesn't wear the mask. Honestly, I think it'd be better if he did. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Uh, also, this episode is kind of short because we ended up finishing the... Yeah, I thought there mission. was going to be more investigation left to do. So. Not quite as much, yeah. Yeah. As we thought, but... It'll kind of end up happening that way sometimes. Yeah, sometimes the timing uh, just doesn't work out well. Well, I think this, this mission was actually shorter than the first one. Yeah, I think we at least didn't spend as much time being like, What do we do? <laughs> yeah. What do I, I do? do? Where do I go? <laughs> yeah. Alright, anyways. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Let's Play Drama Team. I've been Red X Parasite. I've been Air 327. Signing out.